Well, God has been very good to us this morning. I just sense his presence, sense his anointing, uh, and uh, I know that, uh, that he wants to touch us and he wants to bless us. Amen? I know that there's an enemy that doesn't want to bless us, he wants to get our attention on other things, things that we shouldn't get our attention on. But I want to just encourage you this morning to keep your eyes on Jesus. Look to him and uh, let his presence touch your life. What I'm going to share this morning is very, very simple. Very, very, very simple. And I believe that, you know, we have sometimes complicated the Bible so much that we miss the point. And uh, I believe that when Jesus came, he didn't come with real, you know, highfalutin things. He just came and spoke the truth. He's come to set us free. Come to, uh, to bless us and come to watch over us and be our friend. So, Father, right now, I pray that by your Spirit, you would help me today to be able to, to bring forth what, what you put in my heart. And, Lord, we just give you all the praise, give you all the glory for that in Jesus' name. Uh, by the way, this is, uh, we've, we've passed our first week of our, uh, our fast. And uh, to my knowledge, none of us have died yet. And uh, might be a little bit less of us. Uh, might be a little bit less of the flesh, but uh, we're winning. Amen? And uh, that's exciting. I'm enjoying it very, very much. And uh, so that's really, really good. And I want to encourage you. What I want to say is this, is that if you see somebody having a biscuit, don't go over to them and be Mr. Holy Spirit and say, you're having a biscuit. Or you're having a cup of tea. It's entirely up to the people how they do it themselves, Okay. Don't I don't I would be very very upset if I saw people doing that to other people. You do it according to the way you want to do it, and God's going to be happy. Amen. God's not going to be mad with you if you have a biscuit. Amen. I'm certainly not going to be mad with you either. So, amen. So here we are again. So from the beginning of time, God had a desire. God had a plan. God's always had a plan. There's a, there's a lot of things in, that happened, obviously, in, before we, we, we got the Bible or before the Bible starts to reveal things to us. Lots of things happened. There was a war going on in, in heaven. The enemy tried to rise up and try to exalt himself above God and all that sort of stuff. And So there's obviously things, a third of the angels fell. But I'm, I just want to pick it up here. From the beginning of time, God had a plan. God had, had a desire, and God's desire was to, to establish his kingdom on a planet called Earth. He wanted to have a people, or he wanted to have a family. He wanted to, to have a people that he could care for, that he could love on. It seems very, very simple, but really that is God's plan. And all he, all he asks us to do is come to him. You know, we're... We're not to try to exalt ourselves. We're not trying to be this or be that. Just come to Him. Simply come to Him and let Him be God over our lives. Let Him be our Lord. Let Him be our Savior. Let Him be the lover of our soul. And He'll come and He'll help us. It says, the Bible says, the steps of a good man is ordered by the Lord. God said that He watches over us. He cares for His sheep. He, he, he wants to establish us. He wants to help us. So if we can get rid of all the, the stuff, and as Tom was sharing at communion, the way we look at God, the way we look at life, the way we look at all these sort of things, sometimes hinders us in finding the simplicity of a God that is very, 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 is, is, not, is more than unique. He's supernatural. He's, he's, he's awesome. Uh, uh, but, but, you know, and I'm not, not trying to take away from that, but, the simplicity of the gospel has just come to him. I believe that, you know, God's love and the love of God is one of the most powerful forces on this planet. Love in a human is one of the most powerful forces that you'll ever, ever have. And, you know, the love and desire for, for people to have a family, to have loved ones around us, to, to care for them. Parents will give their lives for their children. Literally die for them. They'll give them a kidney. They'll give them whatever they want. They'll, they'll help them. But you see, there's an enemy out there. Yeah, the enemy has, a, has another plan. He has another idea. 
uh, and he has filled the earth with hate, fear, greed, jealousy, lust, and confusion to stop the will of God. I believe that God is relying on the church to rise up to prepare a way for God to move. This is, you know, God is all-powerful. But there's, you know, the, some of the old patriarchs and some of the men and women that we read about in the Bible, one man stood up and said, where are all the, where are all the, the promises? Where are all the miracles? Where, where are they? And, you know, we can look and say, well, God, what's wrong with you that you're not doing this? It's got nothing to do with God. We hold the hand. We stop the hand of God. We, we stop God from doing what He wants to do because of the way we are. And so what God is doing, I believe, in the hour that we're living in now and over the centuries is, is pouring out His Spirit on the church and, and starting to bring us back to a place where we can let God be God and let God do whatever He wants to do. And, and so we know that there's an enemy out there. So God's relying on you and I uh, to rise up and prepare a way for God to move. For God's Spirit uh, can establish again the truth and the purpose of the church. The purpose of the church really is to restore God's kingdom on this planet. And if we're real honest, we see other kingdoms trying to take over. We see the kingdom of this, of this world trying to establish. But, you know, God is going to raise, raise us up if we allow Him to. How many people really want God to, to intervene in your life? See, there's, 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 a, there's a thing there that, that, you know, sometimes our thinking can be wrong. Sometimes what I, the way I think it should happen could be wrong. And if I, if I, but if I hang on to that, well, then God can't change me. But what God wants to do is He wants to get us into that place where, where He can soften us and, and in His presence, and, and then He can start to speak to us and start to reveal stuff to us where, where we say, God, I, I just want you to change me. I don't know about you, but I need to be changed. And, and from glory to glory, He's changing us. So I believe that God uh, make room for God to move so that the Spirit of truth can be established again. So the purpose of God can be established again. So we can uh, start to try to uh, see the kingdom of God established on this earth. You see, the church is not a bless me club. It's an army and it's at war. There is a war going on. Our mission is to prepare the way and then he will do the rest. If we do that, See, I want to just read some scriptures this morning. You see, God prophesied it in the book of Isaiah chapter 40. I'm going to read from verse uh, 3. It says, A voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway uh, for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill brought low. The crooked places made straight, and the rough places smooth." And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. God prophesied this. God prophesied it. And in the book of Mark, if you have a look at the book of Mark, Mark chapter 1, we see the fulfillment of it. It says the, the book of genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. And uh, I'm in Matthew. <laughs> I was wondering if that did not line up with what I was going to say. Oh, hallelujah. In the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophets, this is what was prophesied in Isaiah chapter 40. Behold, I send my messenger before your face who will prepare your way before you. This basically is interpreting what, the, what God was speaking in the Old Testament. He's now saying, Behold, I send my messenger before your face. This is before the face of Jesus, who will prepare Jesus' way before you. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. 
Jesus came baptizing in the wilderness and preaching a baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Then all of Judea and all from Jerusalem went out to him and were baptized by him in the Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and had a leather belt around his waist, and he ate nothing but locust and wild honey. And he preached, saying, There comes one after me who is mightier than I, whose sandals, straps I am not worthy to stoop down and loose. I indeed, indeed baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. He will bap So here now is a prophet that was spoken back there in Isaiah. Now John comes, and he is the, the fulfillment of this prophetic word, and he's starting to declare what, and interpret what God says. And then in verse 9 it says, And it came to pass in those days that Jesus came. And this is what I really want to get hold of today. And it came to pass. Everything that God says will come to pass. It's going to come to pass, amen. And though we may not have seen it, though we may not have, ex have experienced it, though we ha have not touched it, it doesn't matter because God says it, it will come to pass. It will happen. And so as a, as a people, we've got to get ourselves where we're ready to prepare ourselves for the, to make way. Wait, wait before it ever happened, it was prophesied that it happened. I guess that's what I'm trying to get over. There's things that are in this book that have been prophesied that we haven't seen but it's going to happen. And that's where what Tom was talking to with our mindsets and, our, and, our, and, the, and the way we think because we start to... When because we haven't seen it and it hasn't happened yet, we start to think negatively and we start to build a wrong doctrine or a wrong theology around our lives and we think now it's, that's not going to happen. So for me to do something, I'm going to have to change this. I'm going to have to do something. And so what we've been doing over the last few centuries, most probably, and particularly over the last few decades that I've been around, is that man now is trying to build the church. Man's trying to build the church his way, and he's trying to build a church that's going to please people and not necessarily please God. And though it seems good, though we hear the reports of, 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 of if you're a people pleaser, you will, you will obviously gather. If you make a good... Uh, pie, people will gather. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's, that's natural. If you do something that's good, make a nice cake, people will come. If you're a good cook, everybody want to come to your house for dinner. So if you're doing something that's just pleasing the flesh, people will want to come. And people want to be a part of that thing. And so what we're hearing today, what we think is success, may not necessarily really be success. Can you catch my drift here? I believe that God wants to have a revival His way. He, he wants to have a move of the Spirit. Things that are prophesied will happen because He said, in the last days, I'm going to pour out of my Spirit upon all flesh. There's going to come a move of my Spirit. Talks about a latter rain revival. Talks about the, the, the reaper and the sower talks about, about a move of God, talks about a, a great gathering, talks about a, a church triumphant, victorious, ruling and reigning with Christ, talks about, about something that perhaps we haven't really seen yet because there's so much flesh that's got involved in the church. I believe that God wants us to prepare a place for Him. God, it was prophesied. You see, right now, we're, there's a lot of things that have been prophesied. Uh, that, and I, I believe that, that right now there's a, there's a fresh message that's coming out. There's a, a fresh sound that's coming out. There, there's, there's a fresh expectancy that's coming out. There's something that's changing, changing in the atmosphere. We're, we're not coming now like perhaps before to hear the, the preacher get up here because he's 
because he's some big highfalutin now name. You know what I mean? We, we, we're coming because we want God. I, you know, to me, if my children came to my house because we we're putting on a lamb roast and that's all they were coming for, I would be very disappointed. But if they come because they wanted to see me, the lamb roast is a bonus. But if they really wanted to come to see me, that's what touch my heart. Not because I'm a, a good cook, which actually I'm not, you know what I mean? And I'm just using an example here. If we come to church not to hear some great whatever it is of the, of the Word of God, and half of that I don't even believe. I, 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 you know, I tell this joke sometimes with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Listen to some of us preachers down here, and we make some great statement, and he looks at his son and he says, I didn't know that, did you? <laughs> is that why we did that, son? I don't even know we did that for that reason. But I want you to go home, you know, with Mark 1, 9, and it came to pass in those days that Jesus came. And I want to tell you what's going to happen. There's going to come a revival. The church is starting to preach about revival. Starting to preach about revival. When I've been praying, that's all I'm praying. That's all I'm saying. Revival. I'm believing for revival. I'm believing for a double portion of your spirit. I'm believing for an outpouring of your spirit. I'm believing for a revival. If we keep it up, if we keep asking, he said, you have not because you ask not. If we start asking for revival, God will give us a revival. I'm asking for the heathen for our inheritance. I'm believing for a move of God. Just because we haven't seen it, we've got to start to prepare for revival. It came to pass. The gospel of our Lord really, really is very, very simple. We complicate things because of wrong thinking. I don't know about you, but I'm a little bit of a, uh, I like to do a little bit of gardening. Anybody else like to do gardening? Anybody notice that you never have to plant a weed? Hey, where do they come from? Where do the weeds come from? So you don't have to plant lies. They're just there. You don't have to plant wrong thinking. You know, it, it just springs up inside you because of something that's happened, something, somebody's hurt me, somebody's disappointed, blah, blah, blah. And so these things just keep coming up. But you see, God is supreme. You believe that today? And, 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 and he's very, I, I hate to say it like this, but he's very simple in the way he explains things to us. He's very, very good. And you know, in, in uh, Matthew, I might find Matthew this time, I won't go to Luke. Matthew chapter 6, this is what he says. In this manner, therefore pray. And I said, how do we pray? How, show us how to pray. So today, now we say, this is God's prayer. No, that's not God's prayer. It's the way to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name, your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That would be a good start, amen? That would be a good start. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil, from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. Let me read that again. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. In heaven where God lives. Where God lives, amen? Where God reigns. 
where Jesus sits at his Father's right hand. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. And in, in, in Mark chapter, chapter 1, let me read that to you as well, again. Sorry. Because see, these, these are things that I want to indelibly print in my, my mind. In the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send a messenger before your face who will prepare your way before you. That's our, that's our job. That's what God wants us to do, to prepare a way before us, before him. In the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his way. We know in Isaiah 40, verse 3, he also says, says that. John proclaimed the Christ, the gospel. He preached there is one coming. He is mightier than I. I want to tell you, I want to preach today that there is revival coming. I want to speak about a revival. When he comes, he will, this Holy Spirit, he will baptize you with the, with the Holy Spirit and with fire. You shall receive power, the Bible says in the book of Acts chapter 1, verse 8. That's, that's the infilling, that's the whole purpose. You shall receive power to be a witness to me, to be a witness that we'll go out. You see, the church can sit back and, and, and just sing lullabies and, 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 and have a nice time and, and have all everything beautiful and, and, and that. But we've lost the plot. We've lost the purpose. We've lost the plan of God. We've got to go out there and we've got to start to declare Jesus Christ. There, there's a world out there that are dying. There's a world out there that have never heard of Jesus. There's people out there, but the church has got to rise up. We've got to get out of ourselves. We've got to get out of the walls. We've got to be able to somehow or other find people, meet with people, talk with people, go out there and share the gospel. Tell people that Jesus is a good God. He's a wonderful God. John proclaimed in a, in a negative environment. But he said, there's one coming after me. He is mightier than I. He's going to baptize you in the Holy Ghost and with fire. He's going to touch your life. The mighty Holy Spirit was, was given for a purpose, not just so that we could join the Tongue Talkers Club. It was given with a purpose that we might receive power, power to be a witness. And the second thing was power to become a fisher of men. That's in Mark 1.17. This is why you and I, the church, need to have our minds renewed. Our minds renewed is, is not just, you know, perhaps the way we think we're thinking, but we've got to have our whole mind renewed is, is the way we do church. The way, the way I live, the way my purpose. You see, today, most people, their, their, their main aim is to be successful. To try to be successful in life. To, to you know, to accumulate wealth. Two of the richest men in the world died within a week of each other. People were having a discussion and they were saying, I wonder how much they left behind. One man said, I know. I said, do you? How much? He said, the lot. Doesn't help you much in, when you, you know what I mean. And if we spend our whole life, if we spend our whole life trying to accumulate wealth on this earth, when we pass through those pearly gates, we're going to be found wanting. But if we spend our life wanting God and serving God, and, and I'm not talking about trying to bit, get religious. I'm just talking about being a normal Christian, loving Jesus, and, and, and being led by the Spirit and, 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 and sharing Jesus with people. Let people know about Jesus. Not being ashamed of the gospel because it, it is the power of God unto salvation. Not being ashamed. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. The church has drifted off course, not completely or not intentionally, but worldly things have crept in. We're going the way more of the world than we are of the things of the Spirit.
But our main focus should be to prepare a way for the Lord. Prepare a way for the Lord. The book of Revelation is, is speaking of the churches, uh, uh, calling them to re, uh, return, repent. Revelation 2 4, it says, Nevertheless, I have this against you. You have left your first love. Spoke a little bit about that the other night, the other day, that we, we get excited about Jesus and then we, we drift away and just become a, just a Christian. Going to church, sing a few songs, throw God a tip. And that's it. Now we've got to prepare you the way, amen. There's a verse of scripture in, in Revelations that I want to read to you. It's amazing scriptures here. How many people believe the book? Revel can I get can I say this? don't read Revelation at night before you go to bed? <laughs> read it early in the morning, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. It says in Revelation 3.14, And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, write these things, says the Amen, faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works. Can I say this? God knows your works. Okay? God knows our works. He is not an idiot. Please don't treat him like one. He is God. He is awesome, amazing God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot, so then because you are lukewarm, you are neither cold nor hot. I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say, I am rich, have become wealthy, have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. That's, that's heavy. See, I, you can think everything whole, oh, but God knows our works. He knows our lives. He knows everything about us. He knows where you are and knows what you think, everything about you. And you, and you say, I'm rich, I've become wealthy, I have need of nothing. And you do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I wonder how many people walk through those pearly gates and get the shock of their life. And we will get the shock of our life too, I believe, when we see the ones that do get up exalted. Amen? That have just lived that life for Jesus. Poor, wretched, naked, blind. See, the Bible speaks there about returning. He's calling us to return. To return, repent. Return. Return to our first love. Return to the, to the things that God wants for us. Return. Return to Him. Return to Him. And I, and I believe that that is the, the message of this church. That, that is, that is the, the desire of our heart. Is that as a church, you know, we, we, we'd like a building. Sure, we'd like a building. But I, I've said to God, I couldn't care less about a building. I just want you. We can meet under a tree. We could meet anywhere. That's got, you know, building would make it easy, but who cares about easy? This is a beautiful building, amen? This is a lovely building. How many people think it's lovely? Very cheap. <laughs> Air conditioned, the works. But God, we just want Him. Just want Him to come and be with us. And, and if we do what He wants, 
then if we do what he, what he wants us to do, then he can do whatever he wants. He can build a revival. He, he, can, he, can, he can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever imagine or ask. See, we, we read all these scriptures in the, in the book, but, but how, does he, how can he do all these things? The shift that is happening right now is the church. It's coming out of and coming into. Coming out of. See, where we've got, where we've got ourselves wasn't deliberate, wasn't intentional, but that's where we are. Now God, because he's good, will bring us out. And we've got to return to our first love. And as a pastor, if I can say this, though we're not many today in particular, I was just blown away listening to you people just loving on Jesus. Amen? Just listening to you loving on Jesus. That'll do me. Eh? That'll do. We're going to get the musicians up. We're going to sing an amazing song. An amazing song. And I want you just to open up your throttles and let the Spirit of God come in and, and let the King of Glory come. The Bible tells us, I just want to read a scripture while they're coming. Verse 31, in Matthew 6, 31, it says, Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? How many people... Those, those three things are mostly the major things that we think about. Eh? Do not worry saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For after all these things, the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows what you ne that you need all these things. Again, God knows what you need. Verse 33, but seek First, the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things, sufficient for the days of its own trouble. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. Let's stand and sing this song today. If you've got a need this morning and you need prayer, we'll love to pray for you and meet with you today.